Thank you, Jamie. Even as the U.S. helped launch the Allied missile attack on Libya, the country is marking the eighth anniversary of the war in Iraq. As anti-war demonstrators took to the streets today, Libya and America's role there is definitely being debated. Eyewitness News reporter Stacey Sager is live in Times Square with more. Stacey? Well, Sandra, they don't want Libya to become the next Iraq. That's what demonstrators out here were saying today. You know, this was a planned demonstration, and it really had nothing to do with Libya. And then suddenly, it had everything to do with Libya. End the war now! Let's bring our troops home now! They came here to mark the eighth anniversary of the Iraq War, but what's happening today in Libya was clearly on their minds. The U.S. military currently is spread so thin, we cannot possibly afford to go into any more countries and fight another war. We don't, there's people in this country who don't have enough food to eat. Even though the president is claiming that he's concerned about civilian lives and what Gaddafi might do, I think our intervention, if Afghanistan, uh, Vietnam War, or um, Iraq is any indication, we would probably cause more civilian casualties and save them. Still, some say the United States should be playing even more of a leadership role in the Libyan conflict, especially if we want to protect ourselves from the chaos that can become a comfort zone for al-Qaeda. I think we have to push for Gaddafi to be out. It's not enough just to stop his uh, military activity. We have to push him out. Otherwise, there's the uh, uh, threat of total chaos in that country. There is a possibility of al-Qaeda or al-Qaeda supporters coming in. But if we push Gaddafi out, then who comes in? A question today's news doesn't begin to address. Right now, it is all about the show of international force and what it will mean in the weeks, even months to come. The question has to be, do you truly believe that you would want your youngster, your brother, your relatives to put in harm's way to go to Libya. We live in the real world, and the real world is Gaddafi has to be stopped. Uh, we have to uh, eliminate the chaos in the Middle East, because otherwise our lives are at risk. So this is in America's national interest. Now, a couple of other questions that are already coming up. Should the president have come out today and said we won't be committing ground troops to Libya, or is it too soon to really say that? And also, some people are wondering if he plans to seek some sort of approval from the U.S. Congress, not only the United Nations. We're live in Times Square. I'm Stacey Sager, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And Welcome to News 12 Long Island. I'm Jackie Lucas. And I'm Drew Scott. Pressure is mounting on the Libyan leader. The U.S. has already launched a missile strike on the country's air defenses. We've got team coverage on the situation in Libya, beginning with correspondent Barbara Hall. Smoke rises into the air in the city of Benghazi, a sign that the battle between pro- and anti-government forces in Libya continues. But they are not alone. While Libyans were fleeing, French fighter jets flew over the city Saturday in a United Nations mandated effort to keep Muammar Gaddafi's forces from destroying the opposition in Benghazi. In Paris, the U.S. met with European and Arab officials to discuss the no-fly zone over Libya. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said the U.S. is standing with allies in enforcing the United Nations resolution. Now, America has unique capabilities, and we will bring them to bear to help our European and Canadian allies and Arab partners stop further violence against civilians, including through the effective implementation of a no-fly zone. Speaking from Brazil, U.S. President Barack Obama reiterated that the international coalition is united. Our consensus was strong and our resolve is clear. The people of Libya must be protected. Despite the Libyan government's announcement of a ceasefire on Friday, fighting has raged on with civilians in the crossfire. Barbara Hall, News 12, Long Island. We want to go to our newsroom now. That's where we join our Michael Baldwin. He spoke to officials here about what our role in the conflict means. Michael? Well, the French are patrolling the skies, and the U.S. has already launched air defenses along Libya's coast. Locally, one congressman says if ground troops are needed, the U.S. should not be expected to go it alone. The plume of smoke shows the tensions, hostilities, and volatile times that are happening in Libya right now. Rebels are trying to take down a ruthless dictator, but so far, he has refused to get out, even with the international community telling him he needs to go, something many of our local congressional representatives agree with. You have a, a genocidal maniac uh, in Libya right now. 
And secondly, a genocidal maniac requires international action. It shouldn't be just on the shoulders of the United States. We live in a dangerous world. We don't have the luxury of standing back. If Libya turns into total chaos, uh, then that is definitely going to cost more American lives in the future. The U.S. has launched its first airstrike in the western part of the country. President Obama is standing firm that the U.S. will not send in any ground forces. But Congressman Peter King disagrees with the president, showing his hand. I also think he's made a mistake in saying we will not use ground troops. Uh, whether we do or not, we should never let Gaddafi know uh, what we are going to use. There is no indication uh, that uh, this situation requires American ground forces, and quite honestly, I would oppose uh, just American ground forces. We are in Afghanistan, we are in Iraq. Uh, this is an international, this is a global challenge, and it's... The Pentagon says 112 cruise missiles have been launched from U.S. and U.K. ships hitting 20 sites. The missiles have landed near Tripoli and Misrata. The Pentagon says this is the first phase of a multi-phase operation. In the newsroom, I'm Michael Baldwin. News 12 Long Island.